Greetings, trans fans! I'm Funky Monkey. Welcome to my house of love! I love Transformers, but I don't love what Michael Bay has done to the franchise. But we're not here to talk about that. We're here to talk about a little animated movie from the 1980s. A movie that had all the death, destruction, and rock and roll adventure that our tiny hearts could handle. So what is this movie? And what does it have to do with Transformers? Well, this movie is Transformers. The movie. A movie so big, so epic, so spectacular, that I'm going to need a little help reviewing it. So I'll hand over to my former self to introduce the rest of my co-hosts. All points, assemble! Edward here, locked and loaded. Mad Abby! Ready! Fredmore 2 YouTube Reservist reporting. And MicroFunky online. Now, Mr. Mad Andy, if you'd be so kind as to read off the introduction. Thank you kindly, Mr. Monkey Key. Mm. Released in 1986, Transformers the Movie served as a transition between seasons 2 and 3 of the TV show. While it was planned to be just an excuse for killing off the classic characters and introducing new ones, this movie is more than meets the eye. So let's transform and roll out for Transformers the Movie. We're immediately introduced to our main villain, Unicron. And also, his latest victims. The planet Lithone falls to this monstrous astrovore. There is only one survivor. And all this, even before the main titles. Twenty years have passed since the events of the second TV season, and the Autobots have two secret moon bases around Cybertron. But Megatron is devious, and his spies are everywhere. And as a shuttle makes its way to Earth for resources, Megatron attacks! There are no Autobot survivors. Hmm, reminds me of the Massacre of 91. Oh crikey, the Massacre of 91. I'd heard about that. Didn't know you were in that battalion. Well, I was, you know, only there as a medic and field pianist, didn't really take part. Meanwhile, on Earth, Hot Rod and Spike's young son Daniel are fishing. Then the hijacked shuttle pulls in. But Hot Rod sees through the deception, and the Decepticons attack! The Autobots transform their city, but Megatron won't be denied. Luckily, Comps Officer Blaster got the word out, and Optimus Prime appears with the Dinobots to make things right. And we're skipping the sequence of Prime clearing a path to Megatron, mostly because, while it is awesome, it's not massively plot-heavy. Prime and Megatron square off for a final battle, but Hot Rod intervenes, and... Prime! Why? But even mortally wounded, Prime still has one good swing left in him. Without Megatron, the remaining Decepticons retreat, and the Matrix of Leadership is passed to Ultra Magnus. Witness, then, the passing of Optimus Prime. Ladies and gentlemen, a minute of silence for Optimus Prime.
jettison some weight or I'll never make it to Cybertron. And so, the wounded are jettisoned to their fate, and the survivors bicker over who will be the next leader. Sounds like the next Tory conference. Politics! And in the depths of space, a curious meeting occurs. Unicron tasks Megatron with destroying the Autobot Matrix of Leadership, the only thing that can stand in his way. To this end, he revitalizes the wounded Decepticons and reforms Megatron into Galvatron. And so, the newly reformed Galvatron and his henchmen head to Cybertron to reclaim leadership of the Decepticons. Unicron begins his assault by devouring the moons of Cybertron. The Autobot moon bases send out an SOS, but before they can respond, Autobot City is attacked again. The remaining Autobots evacuate to two ships, Hot Rod, Age Transformer Cup, and the Dinobots in one, the others in the other. The battle continues in space, and all seems lost, as both ships are sent to their apparent doom. But in fact, neither crew are harmed. Hot Rod and Cup end up on the planet Quintesson and soon meet the natives. That's it! First Lemon Curry, then the Universal Greeting, then card games on motorcycles. It all makes sense now! Of course! It all makes sense now! How could I have not have seen this? Pretty obvious when you think about it. The secret is that these phrases are memetically inductive. The Dinobots find a new friend. And I know that a lot of people find Wheelie annoying. I don't know, I find him okay. How so? Well, whenever he's on screen, I block my ears and pretend he's voiced by Brian Blessed. That usually does the trick. Cup and Hot Rod are subjected to a kangaroo court. I have nothing but contempt for kangaroo courts. Yeah, I've tried that line out myself. Bought me about six weeks in the nick, as I recall. After a demolition derby in the shark pit, the Dinobots appear. Meanwhile, the other ship has crashed on the planet of junk. But even here, they're not beyond Galvatron's reach. And despite Ultra Magnus's best efforts, the Matrix is taken. And as if that wasn't enough, the group then has to deal with angry junctions. Luckily, Cup and Hot Rod arrive in time to save the day. There you are, you see. Mimetic induction. And so, Ultra Magnus is rebuilt and reactivated. But they still have to retrieve the Matrix and stop Unicron. Thus we move to the climax of the movie. Galvatron attempts to enslave Unicron with the Matrix, but oh dear. A strike team of Autobots crash through Unicron's eye, but Hot Rod gets separated. Hot Rod and Galvatron face off. And when all hope looks lost, Rodimus Prime embraces his destiny. And so our movie ends with the destruction of Unicron and a seeming new golden age. The battle is over, but the adventures of the Transformers will continue and Optimus Prime will return. But that's another story. Anyway, so that was Transformers the movie. Opinions then. Who'd like to start? I found it to be all enjoyable, but maybe a little silly. I do agree that compared with the series it is darker and maybe a little shocking for the kids. Back then I may have been scared and gotten nightmares, but times have changed and I kind of look forward to some seriousness. But not too serious. All in all, I like Transformers. Not necessarily for the story, but I like machines that can become various things. I especially like the time they put into a lot of the animations. So many lines to keep track of. Well, if nothing else, it is quite a fun little batch of explodey bits. I'd be lying if I said its original intent to kill everyone wasn't a bit noticeable and a touch disturbing, distressing and distracting. But there's still a lot of uh, fun to be had in it. Also, it has the Micro Machine Man as a speedster. How can you go wrong with that? I love this movie. I could even call it my favourite of all time. And yes, it's goofy, it's cheesy, and it can be quite dark at times. 
but this is all that I can remember of the 1980s. This and a few Commodore Plus 4 games. And while, at least in my own opinion, the franchise hasn't ever really seen a return to the glory days, we'll always have this movie to remind us of a time when we felt like we really had the touch. So yes, I just have to put 1986's Transformers the Movie into my house of love. So thanks to my co-hosts, Mr. Edward, Mr. Fred, and Mr. Mad Andy. I've been Funky Monkey, and the last word goes to my season one self. Thanks for watching, and join me next week for more fun and frolics. Till all are one.